in this lesson we're going to take a look at how to create this splash effect you have a high impact force that uh, fractures something it could be text it could be any object let's take a look at how to do that let's use shift a to add a text i'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees let's say boom just like that and uh, let's use a thick font so i'll go to the font settings and the font and uh, just find a thick font like area black i'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and go to geometry and extrude it just like that now we can convert this into a mesh because we want to fracture it using the cell fracture the cell fracture add-on is a built-in blender add-on which you can find under edit preferences extensions just search for cell fracture if you don't have it installed install it you can find it under object quick effects cell fracture it only works on meshes so make sure that this is a mesh so let's quick effects. So fracture you can use on vertices. We can start with a source limit of 100. Add some noise. We can create interior vertex groups. And let's add it into our collection called pieces. Okay. And we should start to see some fracturing. I'm also seeing some issues with uh, some of the letters here. So if you're getting that error, just tab into edit mode, select everything and merge by distance. Sometimes the vertices are not merged correctly when you convert a text to a mesh. So let's again go back to object, quick effects, cell fracture. Make sure that you have the same settings as we had before. Just press OK. Yeah, I think now we have better results. Let's isolate this and uh, I can go to the overlays and turn on random colors. Okay, so this is where we are. We have our pieces. Now let's set up our geometry nodes object. Let's add a plane and switch to geometry nodes create a new geometry node setup and importing the pieces collection i can hide the original pieces and now if we look at this you can see what we have and to create this effect we're basically going to use the same technique that we looked at of creating custom forces so let's add a curve shift a curve uh, let's make sure that we are looking at this here it's just going to be a straight line running across so just tap into edit mode press v to access the handle type and change it to vector so that it's a straight line now our curve just goes in like this now remember curves have tangents which is basically the direction of the curve so a tangent for this curve is just going to be pointing in the direction the curve is going so we can use that uh, so we can go in here bring in our curve make sure it's set to relative these instances we need to use our separate children and use a set position if we sample this curve here using the sample nearest nearest surface since this is a curve we need to convert it using the curve to mesh node so this is our curve and we need a circle profile curve circle as the profile if you take a look at this uh, this is too large and uh, we don't need this much resolution we can just bring it down so we can plug this in uh, but uh, we want to sample or we want to capture the tangent of this curve so let's bring in the curve tangent and since we have converted to mesh we need to capture this data so capture and I just bring this in and use it uh, this is a vector so we need to use a vector and we want to use it as the offset for these here for these instances with this if I first mute the set position using M you can see how uh, this is trying to follow the direction of the curve and we can use our vector math and change this to scale to play with the influence just like this but everything is moving let's scale down the influence based on the distance of these instances from the curve we're going to use geometry proximity and this is our geometry and we just need the distance we can plug this directly in into the scale and you can see what we have we just need to remap this using a map range uh, let's say from 0.5 to 0. So only what is closer to the curve, if we take a look at the curve, that's how it looks like. And if we just look at uh, the map range we are setting up, I change this to instance so that we can see this more clearly. You can see that. You can see what we have. So we can even just animate this directly to keep things simple instead of animating 
using the simulation zone, we are going to get the same result. Okay, so what we have looked at so far is the building blocks to the effect we are trying to make. This is just a snippet from my geometry nodes course. If you want to layer more detail onto this effect, uh, check out the lecture. It's going to be uploaded to that course in the course exercises.